So we saw lions, leopards, giraffes, elephants, rhinos, and hyenas in the wild like five feet away from us. And here's how you can too. I'm a blown so we just got back from visiting South Africa and without a doubt the best part of our vacation and the main highlight was our safari through the Sabi Sands. And in this video we're going to talk about exactly what the Sabi Sands are, what makes them so special and different from a traditional safari. We're also going to talk about how you guys can get there and finally we're going to talk about how much it costs and probably how many days you should spend there to make sure that you see everything. So let's get into it. Now, what is the Sabi Sands? So the Sabi Sands is a private game reserve inside of Kruger National Park. But here's the catch. In order to go to Sabi Sands, you have to stay in one of the lodges that are situated within this private game reserve. And they can get a little pricey, which we'll get into at the end of this video. But there's a really good reason for that. Traditionally, when you go on a regular safari through, for example, throughout Kruger National Park or anywhere else in Africa like the Serengeti for example you have a main road that you follow and you must stick to that road you are not allowed to leave the road meaning that if you see like a giraffe or an elephant like way out in the distance and you want to get really really close and see them up close the chances of that happening are kind of slim because you actually have to hope for them to walk towards the road area where you guys are driving so basically on a traditional safari seeing the animals you want to see up closer sometimes maybe Maybe even seeing them at all comes down to a lot of luck. This is where the game drives in the Sabi Sands are different. So first of all, the Jeeps or the Toyota Land Cruisers that you drive throughout the Sabi Sands and that the lodges have are completely uncovered. So there's no barrier above you, to your left, to your right, to your behind. You're completely immersed in the experience. Secondly, in the Sabi Sands, because it is a private game reserve, you're actually allowed to off-road and completely leave the path and literally drive into the actual habitat and the environment where these animals live. Now, the rangers and the people that work at these lodges and these private game reserves within Sabi Sands really, really know this environment well and their care and love for the environment is very high. So even when they off-road and they go into the environment of an animal, they're very respectful of literally everything around them making sure not to destroy any natural habitat of the animals. Also, the animals within the Sabi Sands game reserve, the private game reserve, have really become accustomed to humans over time. They don't see them as a threat. Even the big predators like lions don't really see humans or any humans within our specific vehicles within the Sabi Sands as threats. So they're very comfortable with you getting really, really close. And the, this combination of coexistence, off-roading, and completely uncovered Jeeps makes for a very, very unique once in a lifetime experience where you're able to come face to face with some of the most dangerous and rarest animals in the world and they're only meters away from you and they don't mind you being there. Now your stay in any of the lodges within the Sabi Sands is going to be set up in the following way. You're going to go on two daily game drives. The first game drive usually starts around 5.30 a.m. and then the second one starts at 4.30 p.m. Both of these will last around three hours and the starting time and the lasting time will sort of depend on whichever lodge that you're staying at. Now, like I mentioned before, most of these lodges use Toyota Land Cruisers and they have ample seating and I'm obviously going to have footage and photos of that Land Cruiser and what the experience of off-roading in those vehicles looks like playing while I'm talking, but it offers for a very, very comfortable and high rised experience so you're still really above everything but you're still uncovered and very very immersed in the environment now you'll have a ranger assigned to you and this is going to be your driver for your entire stay at the lodge and then there's also a seat up front on the land cruiser that you'll notice that's on the hood of the vehicle this is where the tracker sits so you'll also have a tracker and their job is to obviously track certain animals see their paw prints on the floor um, see any disturbance in like the environment or landscape or anything like that they're really really good at their job and they're very good at finding animals now one thing I will mention and I didn't know this during the first day and I feel like it's a great bonus tip when you're staying at the Sabi Sands they really cater the experience to your liking so depending on the size of your group you're actually able to request what animal you want to see and the Rangers and the trackers will do their best within reason to make sure that you have that experience 
experience. So for example, my wife and I, we really, really wanted to see black rhinos. It was one of the main reasons that we went to the Sabi Sands because we knew that they were more common there. If you know anything about black rhinos, you know that they're going extinct very, very quickly. So it was really a dream of ours to see a black rhino. And our ranger and our tracker really made sure that this happened. Um, we tracked the black rhinos for two days and we were treated to an unbelievable experience where we came upon a female black rhino as well as a baby black rhino that was only two years old. The second horn hadn't even grown in yet. And this was without a doubt our favorite moment of this safari experience in the Sabi Sands. Now let's talk about how you can get to the Sabi Sands. Certain reserves and certain lodges will have private airstrips where you can fly into directly, but those are really, really expensive. So for a reasonable travel experience, Experience to the Sabi Sands, you're most likely going to be landing in Johannesburg if you don't already live in South Africa. Once you land in Johannesburg, you're going to take another flight to an airport called Hoytsbrut, and this is a relatively short flight. After that, there's actually another drive ahead of you from that airport to arrive to your lodge. Now, depending on what lodge you're staying at, it's gonna take about two to two and a half hours for you to get there. And it's really, really important that you set up this transport or this transfer through your tour company that you've booked your experience with or through the lodge or the reserve directly because this road is not safe for non-locals to drive through and there are a lot of um, different and rural areas that you might have to drive through that it might just not be safe for you to do it yourself if it's your first time in South Africa. So I highly recommend that you have your transfer pre-booked. Finally, let's get to the cost. Now, keep in mind, this is a once in a lifetime experience for most people. Um, and so it is definitely on the more pricier and expensive side, especially if you're visiting the Sabi Sands. Now, most of the resorts or the lodges or whatever you wanna call them in the Sabi Sands are four to five star and they're pretty luxurious accommodations. Now, I will say that a lot of these prices start at $1,500 Canadian because my wife and I are Canadian per night and that's what the starting rate is and it can go really really high depending on what lodge you stay at and what kind of luxury experience you're looking for but i will say that this price is all inclusive meaning that once we got there other than the gift shop we didn't spend a single dollar the nightly price includes all of your food all of your activities literally everything that you're doing from the moment you arrive at the lodge till the moment that you leave now if you're a budget traveler here's what i have to say about the price and everything i would just go with whatever lodge fits your budget because I think the game drive experience regardless of whichever lodge you stay at is pretty much virtually the same a lot of the times when we were out on our game drives we would see the vehicles from other lodges around us or near us at some point also all the drivers the rangers and the trackers from other lodges don't seem to know each other and they're always in communication letting them know whenever they have an animal sighting or anything like that so it's like one big team so if you just want the game drive experience I would say pick which Whichever one fits your budget just to have this experience and one of the more budget options um, and I'll leave their link in the description below if you guys are interested but is elephants playing game lodge they are a little bit on the cheaper side so if you're looking for a more budget option that is the lodge that I would recommend you stay at within the Sabi Sands Reserve and finally how long should you stay so we personally stayed for a total of three nights meaning that we got six game drives in which is about 18 hours of game driving pretty sure that math is accurate. But in that time, we were able to see literally every single animal that we were interested in seeing. And I would recommend a similar time frame. I think it's important because sometimes there are factors that are out of your control, such as weather or migration patterns or anything like that. So if you're really keen on seeing a specific or certain animal like we were, I think three nights is sort of the sweet spot that you want to aim for while staying in the Sabi Sands. Anyways, that's my guide on how you guys can visit the Sabi Sands in South Africa. Africa. And if you have any questions about this once in a lifetime experience, definitely leave a comment below. I'll definitely get back to you or DM me on Instagram if you have any more detailed questions where you would like to have more of a conversation. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you guys liked it as usual, you know the drill, smash that like button. If you guys are into travel guides, drone photography, all that good stuff, then definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it. That's all I have for this video though. I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, keep creating.